finally, the MacBook Pro 2021 is here. And while it's expensive, it's worth the wait. Apple listened to years of customer feedback to put the Pro back in the MacBook Pro. And with its blazing fast new M1 Pro processor and beautiful screen, not to mention a ton of other stuff, it's better than ever. You could say they've even kicked it up a notch. But everything is perfect here, so we're going to dive into the pros and cons of the 14-inch MacBook Pro 2021, a laptop that many people have waited years for. Apple slimmed some things down this year, but along the way, a blemish popped up. So yes, let's get this over with. Apple gave the MacBook Pro a flippin' notch. Just like the iPhone, there's that little wedge of the bezels at the top of the screen that sticks out, right where its cameras are. And I can get it. Apple shrunk the bezels where it could, as you can see here with the 2020 MacBook Pro. The bezels are much shorter, but apparently it couldn't shrink the bezels around the new 1080p webcam in this new MacBook Pro. The good news is the notch only fills in part of the menu bar area, which now exists in the freed up space at the top of the display. And that space in the middle typically doesn't matter unless your app has a lot of menus and those menu buttons can slide to the right of the notch. Aside from that, the MacBook Pro 2021 has a slightly different look, dropping the taper lid for a flatter design. The front lid is still easy to open with a single finger, and now the feet of the laptop are more pronounced, and the words MacBook Pro are debossed on the bottom for a nice little touch. The 14.2 inch MacBook Pro is predictably larger than the old 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020 and the current 13 inch XPS 13. That said, it's also smaller than the Razer Blade 14, which is 14 inches, and of course, smaller and lighter than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's time to talk about ports, scintillating, I know. A big story with this year's MacBook Pro is that Apple's acknowledging that pros cannot live off of just USB-C and USB-C alone. Dongle life is sort of over. The magnetically attaching MagSafe charger is back, and we don't know why it ever left. Apple's still using USB-C to charge the MacBook Pro just on the other side of the magnetically attaching cable. You can also charge the MacBook Pro with a USB-C cable. Now, any tension applied to the MagSafe cable flicks that cable off and your computer stays in place. Exactly what we've needed this whole time. The new MacBook Pro is also getting an HDMI port and SD memory card reader, which respectively are great for when you need to plug into a display and insert memory from a real deal camera for photo and video. I'll still wind up using an adapter though, as the need for USB-A isn't going away anytime soon. My Blue Yeti mic, Logitech wireless adapter for mouse and keyboard, and hard drives are still all on USB-A, not USB-C. Another welcome change in the new MacBook Pro is the death of the touch bar, that little OLED touchscreen found at the top of the MacBook Pro keyboard for the last few years. It replaced the function row keys, which are back and at full height now. You can press F to pay respect, but I won't. My fingers kept accidentally activating the touch bar, leading to weird mistakes. Apple never really found an important use case for it, and I'm glad it's gone. The MacBook Pro's now also got a black on black mag magic keyboard, ditching the silver well, the metal between the keys, for a black one. It's a purely aesthetic choice, but looks good to my eye at least. Typing on the Magic Keyboard is just as pleasurable as ever, as is navigating macOS on its Force Touch trackpad. But we've got to talk about the new mini LED Liquid Retina XDR display in the MacBook Pro. It is amazing. I've been using Apple's excellent new iPad Pros. 12.9 inch one also features a mini LED display for a while, but this actually might be my favorite Apple display yet. Seriously. Why is it my favorite Apple display yet? Well, for starters, HDR content on this Liquid Retina XDR display looks amazing. That's high dynamic range content. For example, the contrast of the reds, blacks, and whites in the final fight of the Scott Pilgrim versus the world looked amazing. The bathroom brawl in Mission Impossible Fallout looked crisp and perfect with the neon in the bathroom and the dark shadowy areas of the room. And the beach tones in Jordan Peele's Us looked great. Also, this panel has a 120 hertz ProMotion refresh rate for much smoother everything. That means text is gonna appear more smooth when you're scrolling, games will look smoother, and those aforementioned movies also looked more correct than ever. You never knew that you needed it until you see it. So if you look at it in the store, be prepared to get that credit card out. Don't say I didn't warn you. It's color output is predictable from Apple because they always love to go with close to 100% range of the sRGB spectrum. That said, the Dell XPS 13 and Razer Blade 14 don't get that much more colorful. Brightness though is a different story as the 14 inch MacBook Pro and its big brother get brighter than the rest. The huge story about Apple's new laptops though is performance. The M1 Pro in the 14 inch MacBook Pro that we tested had a 10 core CPU and armed with 32 gigs of RAM. And this had everything running buttery smooth. Apps opened snappily. 
chrome tabs by the dozens, a 4K video played in the background disrupting nothing. It all just worked, apps on top of apps, nothing stuttered at all. And it obliterated the competition on benchmarks. The Geekbench 5 score from the MacBook Pro 14 inch is more than double the XPS 13s, which was running on a Intel Core i7 11th gen processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it also towered over the scores from the 2020 M1 processor system-based MacBook Pro and the AMD Ryzen 9 Razer Blade 14. The wins kept on coming though in the handbrake video transcoding test where the MacBook Pro 2021 14 inch finished in less than a third of the time that the XPS 13 took and more than two minutes in front of the 2020 MacBook Pro. The new MacBook Pro's SSD storage is also faster than the rest, but you don't see much of a difference if you go between 14 and 16 inch. It's just fast. That said, the 14 inch Pro did lose a round on the Puget Bench Photoshop test, where the 16 inch Pro just turned a higher score and a shorter finish time. Both though beat the 2020 MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Apple's moved from a stereo speaker setup in the 13 inch MacBook Pro to a six speaker sound system in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And wow, you can hear the difference. When I turned on Spotify on the new MacBook Pro, I couldn't help but bob to the actually significant beat and the bass. Apple loves to put a lot of sound in small devices, so I shouldn't feel surprised, I'm still impressed. Apple's also moved up to a 1080p full HD internal webcam, having realized that we live in a world where remote video conferencing is key. Hey there, this is Henry T. Casey from Tom's Guide. I'm reviewing the new MacBook Pro 2021, and this is a test of its new 1080p webcam and new microphones that pick up more of the low end of the sound. I don't have the lowest voice. I'm curious to see how this video compares to one recorded on a 2020 MacBook Pro. 720p webcam over there, and not as great mics in theory, says Apple. Okay, I can already see the difference in this webcam on this screen. This, if you can't already tell, is the 2020 MacBook Pro with a less, what's the 720p webcam. I'm not sure how much different the audio is gonna sound, but yeah, no, this is obvious. This is the MacBook Pro that many have waited for, myself included. Not only does it pack a super bright screen and the awesome power of the new M1 Pro, but we love it for the little things too like the return of MagSafe and the HDMI and SD reader port and the death of the touch bar. That said, it's not a perfect situation. The notch may be explicable, but it's still unsightly. The battery life is long, but still shorter than the 13-inch MacBook Pro from last year. And wow, it's expensive at $2,899 for the model we tested, which has a $1,999 starting price. A similarly spec XPS 13 is $2,069, more than $800 less, while the Razer Blade 14 is $2,199, also more affordable. But neither can touch the new MacBook Pro 14 inch on performance, display, or battery life. That said, all that cash and no USB-A port? Really? The other annoyance here is about the MacBook Pro we didn't see an upgrade for, the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Why didn't that get the new ports? It doesn't really feel like a MacBook Pro anymore, especially by comparison. So in conclusion, while this MacBook Pro is the right MacBook Pro for many, it's got some little reasons that could make people wait another season or two to see what Apple does in 2022. The last time I bought a MacBook Pro was in 2012. And they launched the Retina Display MacBook Pro, and I'm glad I waited and this is one of the best MacBook Pros in years. Check out tomsguy.com for our full review.